cut screen from Brody, spins to the left hand on the near block. Great pass from DeVries to Brody, and he goes to work against Clough. 21-15, the Drake Bulldogs can get hot, cannot allow them to get any confidence. Walks probing to Clough. Dribble hand off to Yakimovsky, near wing, three-pointer on the way, got it! Yakimovsky pouring it in from deep. 21-18, cuts the lead in half. For those that are just joining us, we're here live in Omaha. It's WSU, it's Drake, it's, I'm not gonna say it because we might get in trouble in the branding rights, but it is tournament basketball in March. DeVries leaves it short, Yakimovsky picks up the rebound, 21 to 18, 818 to play from Omaha. And there will be a stoppage on the court, it's gonna probably be a foul on Drake. Let's see who it's on, gonna be on Darnell Brody. Yeah, it, it, Darnell, that's exactly what you needed if you're WSU. We talked about it earlier in the broadcast. Darnell Brody, if Bill Murray was going up against him, the Ghostbusters team would say he's the second biggest monster they've ever seen behind the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. So Darnell Brody, if you want to neutralize him, you got to get him in foul trouble, and they're having to go to the bench right now, and they're not as deep as WSU is, and so that will give the Cougs an opportunity to get back the lead. Exactly. It's 21-18. to 18. Just turn, drives inside, trips on himself, passes it off, and he loses it out of bounds. That's got rejected inside by Chinyelu. And we'll take a break. It's 21 to 19. Drake has the lead. And just to look, knowing that you have a coach's kid, it's kind of a hometown feel with in being in Des Moines, Iowa. We were talking to some people that are from Iowa and Drake fans. It means a lot to have a guy like Tucker DeVries be, be the horse that pulls the wagon. Well, here's the thing, too, Davis, is DeVries grew up on this court. Like, he went to camps here and shot free throws and so he feels right at home he's chilling like uh take it uh, like look, look at this guy he's he's the son of darian devries and so they've been coming here like it's nothing this is the big city it's like uh going from pullman to spokane and doing shots in the the big arenas and whatnot and so of course he's going to feel comfortable of course he's going to be just over the lamb but that's what we were saying earlier in the broadcast. If you make him uncomfortable, if you give him looks that he's unfamiliar with, because look, the only real competition they've ever faced this year was against Nevada. And you were talking about earlier how last year they went up against Miami and they had no clue what they were doing. It was like a fish out of water. And so if we could do that as a still a power five program, at least for another year, if we can do that to this kid and the, just the coaching staff and everyone on that bench, then we have a real shot. And because then next we have Iowa State, which that's also going to be a home court atmosphere for them. And so this is going to be a test run for us. If we can do that, we need to just do this exact same thing against the Cyclones. Let's take a look now at Washington State's, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of recap on this game. We did have some technical difficulties that did not allow us to get on air as, as quickly as we wanted, but the player that everyone knows if you're a Washington State fan is Isaac Jones. And he is, he is just a phenomenal player. He was first team all Pac-12. And another guy is Miles Rice. Those two hold down the fort for Washington State, both averaging about 15 points per game. And the thing for Drake is Tucker DeVries is great, but he averages 21 points a game. And that for Washington State, as you look at Isaac Jones, He's over, scored over 1,000 points in his career, but it's better to have two guys that can do things than one guy that you're really relying on because last year against Miami, he only scores three points and they lose in the first round. He has improved over this season, but in the tournament, Drake has not always fared so well. Can they get a win tonight, or will it be the Washington State Cougars moving on? We are back underway, 21-19 our score. Garland on the far side. Nearly poked away by Rice, kicks it back to Garland, pumps. Inside to Ferguson, contested by Wells, and it's going to be a foul on Jalen Wells, and it will be Ferguson to go to the free throw line for Drake. I, it's looking good so far. You're getting a little bit more competitive in there. That was the problem with this team was they weren't quite physical enough, and you need to do that on a team of this stature. Early jitters have been a real thing in this tournament for a lot of teams. We already saw Kentucky go down. 
and there's just a lot of things that can go right and a lot of things that can go wrong for teams if you don't get hot early, especially for these under-seeded teams. Look at Chinyelu. I haven't seen Chinyelu act like this as he gets the rebound. I haven't seen him act like that in the low post all year long. I mean, he was a little bit like that in February, but I love to see it. Ferguson 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Washington State on the offensive attack. Jones free throw line entry pass to Chinyelu. Tapped away by Ferguson right into the hands of Garland. He's got a fast break. Running up the court. Overton can't lay it in. Rebound to Isaac Jones. Kicks it to Rice. Excuse me, that's Isaiah Watts. We'll stop at the top of the key. Put it on the right side. Jumper goes for Isaiah Watts and it's tied 21-21, seven minutes to play. Channeling a little bit of Grandpa, the supersonic that helped them win a championship. Tucker DeVries leaves it short. Jalen Wells pulls it down. Rice clears for Washington State. Stops, gives it to Watts. Pulling up, crossover, step back, three. Left it long and he gets the rebound and throws it off of his own guy in Chinyelu and it'll be out of bounds. Some substitutes will be coming in. Two players for Washington State hustling to get him up off the ground. Rice and Chinyelu, really good teammates right there. It's a really tight-knit team for Washington State. It feels like more closer-knit than other teams in the past. Yeah, of course. I mean, we alluded to it earlier. In 2008, Clay Thompson was a freshman. You didn't have, uh, you didn't have the names that supported him like... Uh, I'm going to move on as the play de develops here. Brody at the elbow. Tucker DeVries got it swatted away by Yakimovsky. Washington State pushing the other way. 21 all. Wells in far corner. Three ball rolls in. 24-21. Timeout Drake. Getting that lead. I was going to say Aaron Baines earlier and other in company. That is exactly what we're talking about. Making that extra pass, finding the open man in the corner, leaving him eight. It was a, a questionable three. It was going down. It looked like a flush in the toilet bowl with the way it was going around the rim, but it find it found its way to get down. That was a problem with this team is they weren't being able to find the three ball, and they were successfully able to do that. And now that's how we're getting a lead here with six minutes left to go in the first. 24-21, 6 to play. We will take a quick break and be back on the other side of this timeout. Just a few seconds here. You're not listening to something that's great. You're listening to something that is Cable 8. Twenty four twenty one six nineteen to play. Drake called the timeout to try and stop the momentum from the Cougs. Inbounds Connor Enright, who has yet to score in this game. DeVries has seven, their leading scorer and the motor that runs the car. Brody, top of the key, gives it to DeVries. Bounce pass back to Brody. Got away with a travel and rebounded by Jalen Wells. Ball does not lie. Well, you can also say Jalen Wells got away with a hand check on that one. Rice wanting a screen, just ends up giving it away to Jones at the top of the key. Dribble handoff to Watts. Back to Jones, spins on Brody. Picks up his dribble, kicks it out to Yakimovsky. Passes it to Rice. Back to Yakimovsky in the far corner. Step back three on the way. Left it short, rebounded. That time by Gibson and Drake pushing over. Sorry, that's Enright spinning. Kicks it eight and right. Different guy. Shot goes from the free throw line, 23-24. I want you to watch this steering. It's it Technically, in the rule books, it would be a hand check or a holding. But watch the steering that they'll have from the Drake defense. Look at that right there from the screen. That is a problem that Kyle Smith has to address to the referees moving forward at halftime. A lot of physical play in Omaha. Jones was underneath the hoop and he got pushed by Brody. That'll be a defensive foul on Darnell Brody, which is a big deal for Drake because if he gets in foul trouble, there is not a lot of people that can come in and be a sub for him that has this nearly the same impact at all. As soon as I say that, he was trying to do that steering method that he was doing earlier on the other side of the court, but he made an extra push, and so it was a little bit, a little bit more obvious. So maybe the officials will start looking at that a little bit more closely. 
Inbound from Rice. All the way out near midcourt, Jalen Wells does good to not step over the half-court stripe. 4.58 to play, 23-24. Cougars have a one-point lead. Rice leaves it short from the top of the key from distance. Enright pulls it down, motoring the other way. Picked up by Akamovsky, will swirl back out. Eight and right, picks up his dribble, passes over to the far side in Enright. Drake's going to set up their offense, four and a half to play. Eight and right for three on the near wing. Doesn't get it. Yakimovsky pulls it down. Cougars doing a good job limiting the offensive boards for Drake in this game. A lot can happen if you don't let this game stay close for Washington State, if you got to keep Drake off the offensive side. And Jones powers inside over Ferguson and leaves it for two. DeVries is an offensive menace as he has control of the ball right now. He was actually setting up a really good screen in the, lo in the left wing here, and I don't think that gets talked about enough. He's an offensive demon when it goes into going in the paint like he is right now and misses that shot as I say that. I <laughs> jinxed him. But he, he also sets his teammates up for success. That's how if the Bulldogs are going to win tonight, he has to be a support to his other teammates. And that's WSU can exploit that. Jones going inside, gets fouled by Ferguson, does not get the N1, but he'll go to the line for two. Tucker DeVries so far still only at seven. So he came in with seven around the 10-minute mark-ish and we've held him scoreless since. So that's really, really good, and that's why we have a three-point lead because Tucker DeVries averages 21 points a game. He's already a third of the way there, so it can get risky if Washington State lets any one of these guys go off, but especially Tucker DeVries because you can let somebody, uh, some of these other guys score. Their, they're going to get to their limits, which is around like eight, nine points per game, but DeVries is a guy you cannot let get hot at all, and we've done a pretty good job so far. And how have we done that, BG? Well, I think part of it is you're taking out Brody of the, out of the equation, right? And we've talked about this earlier. Isaac Jones is better at drawing the foul than Stan Lee is drawing Spider-Man. He is just immaculate at getting guys in foul trouble, trouble, especially centers and forwards, basically big men that basically camp out in the paint. If he can keep on doing that, then that will set everything in motion. DeFreeze is going to be frattled. Uh, they're going to have to go to the bench, which they haven't seen. Uh, they don't have a lot of talent on the bench-wise. And so it's all like a trip, trickle effect. Effect. If you can take one Jenga block out of the tower, it will create an unstable foundation for the Bulldogs, and that is something to attack if you're WSU. Well, I have it in my notes that the key matchup slash the exploit is getting Darnell Brody in foul trouble He's a great big, don't get me wrong. Transfer from Seton Hall, mm -hmm. fantastic big, but they don't have, they have one other guy, Nate Ferguson, who is six foot eight, 220 pounds. That's still a monster. It's still pretty good, but he is not at all the same caliber guy. He only averages 3.7 points per game, where Darnell Brody averages 11.3, so it's really, a really, really big deal to get him out of the game. And Washington State has done a really good job of that because we have two big guys, mm -hmm. and really even three with Isaac Jones. Isaac Jones, Ruben Genielu, and Oscar Clough that can go in and do a fantastic job of dealing with, he's a physical player, so if you're going to get him to go in foul trouble, it's going to have to take a toll on your offensive guys and defensive guys, you know, on both sides of the court. But we have enough personnel to do it. He's that redshirt freshman, Ferguson. I think this is a great uh, alluding to connecting it to WSU, right? You have Yesifu, who gets injured, and Miles Rice has to step in and get that reps be on the court more. And so Miles Rice has to be a little bit more in of himself. Now, is he hitting the three ball? No. Am I groaning? Yes. But Ferguson didn't have that opportunity like Miles Rice has had in getting that reps throughout the season because Brody has not been in foul trouble. Brody has done a really good job at keeping his distance, keeping his vigor, and taking deep breaths and mindfulness and being calm and relaxing down there. But now, as WSU's pressuring it, Ferguson really won't have that experience. Even though he's a redshirt junior, he won't have that experience at this level. And so that's what, how you can keep on attacking that. And if you get Ferguson a little bit rattled too, which he's kind of been a little shaky so far, then you don't have anyone. Wh who are you going to go to in the depth chart? You're, you're, you're done. Right. 
Exactly, and that's why it's so important to get him in foul trouble. Isaac Jones will be at the free throw line. 26-23, 3.34 to play. Kansas right now up on Samford. A lot of people thought that the Bulldogs could come in and upset them. Gonzaga beat McNeese earlier tonight already. So some of the most popular upset picks have not came come through in the first round. Oakland beat Kentucky as Jones puts in the first free throw, 27-23. The Wildcats have continued to struggle in the opening round. Lost to St. Peter's a few years ago, and now Oakland. Jones puts in the second, 28-23. Three and a half to play in Omaha in the first half. Winner moves on to play Iowa State on Saturday. And right bounce pass to Ferguson. Trying to get DeVries open. He's going to run the baseline. It's Aiton right with the ball. Dribbles right hand to the short corner. Leaves it for Enright inside. Right hand layup goes over Yakimovsky. 28-25, 3.15 to play. Drake cuts the lead to three. And he immediately goes on defense. Enright immediately goes on defense and starts to get the pressure on Rice. That is an athlete right there. Jones at the near side. Dribbling inside. Bumped by Ferguson. Puts it up. Doesn't get the roll. Ferguson did a good job of being physical and coming to the, the contact point with Jones. DeVries, fancy dribbling. Get, picks up his dribble, leaves it for Ferguson. Wide open inside, and he lays it in with the right. 28-27, 2.43 to play. Winsu fell asleep on the backside for Washington State that time. They get it over the timeline with Yakimovsky picked up by DeVries. Not necessarily the best defender, but he is a great athlete. Wells dumps it down to Winsu. Double team comes, swings it all the way to the far side. Yakimovsky dribbling inside to Rice, top of the key. Will back it out. Eight to shoot for the Cougars. Rice darts inside, pull up jumper from the free throw line. Doesn't get the roll, and it's going to be a foul inside against the Bulldogs on Isaac Jones trying to get that rebound. Again, what do I like to say? He draws the foul better than Stan Lee draws Spider-Man, or was. R.I.P. to the legend. The guy, I don't know how he does it, but he just he gets him to go just a little bit far, and you can see the glimmer in his eyes as soon as he sees that opening of getting that guy into foul trouble. He's like, oh, I'm going to take advantage of this, and he almost gets a little bit of a smirk. I love to see it every single time. Inbound to Jones. He has it against Ferguson. Kicks it out to Wells. Deep three on the way and goes. Jalen Wells is an absolute sharpshooter, and he gives the Cougars a four-point lead with two minutes to play. Look, there ain't a lot of Coug fans here, but the ones that are here are loud and proud. You can see it in the Crimson section. That was an amazing three for just those that, stand, that fan base. DeVries pulls up from around halfway between the free throw line and the basket and misses it. Jones pulls it down the rebound. Miles Rice picked up by Enright. Far wing, trying to dump it down to Jones. Ends up getting it there. Ferguson has had a tough night with trying to out-physical Jones. Rice got it poked away. Stolen by Aiton Wright and the Bulldogs motoring the other way. Stolen by Isaiah Watts. Towelman's got to get out of the way. Cross-court pass to Yakimovsky loses it. And a foul on Enright. Watts took a number out of Drake's playbook with that last steal. It was almost like flipping a page back as a, a reference. It, it was amazing. That was, that was a great call. I know that you have a stat line that you want to uh, tell us here. You tell me. <laughs> well, Drake averages 12.3 turnovers forced, forced per game, and Washington State averages 10.6, so pretty even there. Mm -hmm. And that was one for each team right there. But Watts has done a really good job this season of being maybe too aggressive sometimes, yeah. but getting steals is kind of what he wants to do. Well, and then that led to, I think, even though Yakimovsky misses the first, that led to the foul. If you can get this team just in general foul trouble and make them go to the bench, that's a win. Yeah. Yakimovsky puts up the second free throw off the back rim. And 0 for 2 from the stripe, Yakimovsky. That's okay. That's okay. Just trying to shake off these first half jitters possibly. 31-27. Pretty good first half from the Cougars and the Bulldogs. Eight and right. Picked up by Watts at the top of the key. Right crosses over, left hand finish, doesn't get it. Jones gets the rebound. Four point lead for the Cougars, less than a minute to play in Omaha in the first half. Rice puts it on the deck and that went off of somebody's foot and it'll go to Washington State. That went off of Garland's arm and he was like, what, what are you talking about, what are you talking about? That was definitely on them. But uh, I, I, I'm glad that the, the vision was not impaired down on the hardwood. 
Rice to trigger from the Creighton logo on the near corner. That's going to be a five-second violation on Washington State. Drake's hounding defense on the inbound. Really impressive to just stay tight on all those Cougars, which pretty rare nowadays to get a five-second violation, especially when you have the tallest team in Division One. Just lob it up to somebody. It was definitely hounding from the Bulldogs. Uh, that right there, if you're WSU, you just need to get it out. Even if it's a turnover, you just got to throw it out there. Less than a minute to play. DeVries drives inside. Rejected by Jones and a fast break opportunity for the Cougars. Winsu has it. Pulls it back out. Slowing it down. Nearly gets it stolen away. And now the ball is out to Overton. Behind the back pass to DeVries. And he puts it in with 30 seconds remaining. Two-point game. They're slowing it down. That's what you have to do here. You cannot let Drake have confidence going in at the half. Isaac Jones at the NCAA logo, 19 seconds to play. 16 on the shot clock. It's a two second differential. Near wing, Jones sizing up Ferguson. Gonna go to work. Hop step into the lane, right hand finish goes. 33-29, three seconds left. DeVries at half court, pulls up for three off the top of the backboard and it's a four point lead for the Cougars going into half, really. Good first half of basketball from Omaha. All of the games here today have been quite fantastic. What are your thoughts on this first half, BG, and what can the Cougars do in the second half to maintain this lead and come home with a win and play Iowa State on Saturday? Look, you needed to have a lead going into the half. That boosts confidence, that gives you a little bit of ease coming out of that tunnel. This is a crazy environment. Again, we alluded to it. This is an NBA-type stadium. Cougs... I, yeah, you played it in uh, uh, T-Mobile Arena in Vegas, kind of very similar, similar to this. But look, that's still, going from Beasley to Omaha, that's a drastic shift. And so having that confidence, having that vigor, but it's also a downside because it's the wheat field underdogs versus the bulldogs and look it's not about the size of the dog in the fight it's about the size of the fight in the dog and if you poke the bear in uh drake and kind of embarrass them a little bit on their home not court but home atmosphere then they might come out and start to chomp on on, on the on the meat a little bit and have a little bit more bark or a little bit more bite to the bark if you know what i mean 33 to 29, Washington State has not been in the tournament since 2008 and they made a sweet 16 run beating Winthrop in the first round and then Notre Dame in the second round, yeah. losing to North Carolina as the one seed. This team can be etched in Washington State history, already have been etched in Washington State history forever making the tournament, but getting a win would be so huge. Just an absolutely fantastic opportunity awaits 20 minutes from a first round win against the Drake Bulldogs, live from Omaha. Any final thoughts before we send it away for halftime? Look, Davis, Coug fans need to have the, the wherewithal. I know that they're always doubted in the athletics, but this team was supposed to finish 10th in the Pac-12. And now they're one of 64 in the nation to compete on this stage. So that's a win. That's a win right there, whether Kyle Smith goes, where the whole starting lineup transfers, doesn't matter. This year is a win, and that should be cherished. That should be enjoyed, and enjoy this moment. Even if the Cougs lose tonight, it is this magical journey of what has been an incredible year and the last year for them to be in the Pac-12, and they should just savor that. And whatever happens, you know, is gravy. And, but this moment is, cher is special and should be cherished. You're not listening to something just great. You're listening to Cable 8. We'll be back after halftime.
there are few greater things in the world than March Madness. And I am not alone in that. I am along, I'm Dave Sagan alongside BG. And I think we're in agreement that this is one of the greatest experiences that we've ever had in our lives. And right now, four-point lead for Washington State, 33-29. to 29. BG, what do they have to do to take this one home and allow us to come back on Saturday and call another Cougar game? Dude, look, we've, me and you, brother, we've gone through a bunch of technical difficulties with the stream, <laughs> with the exactly. setup, with everything in this right yeah. now. But we're making it work, and we're here right now, right? And I think that's kind of the synapsis of WSU. It's like they've had gaps in play. They've let Drake kind of in here. They're in hostile territory with the Bulldogs having this kind of home court environment almost. But they're making it work. They're up at half, 33 to 29. And I think that they just got to – if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know, just – Emphasize the things that you're doing well, like getting the rebounds, uh, getting those defensive rebounds, um, kind of competing at Drake's own game. They're number one in the nation at defensive rebounds. But we're doing pretty good with Isaac Jones being low in the paint. So keep feeding that. Keep getting uh, the big man for the Bulldogs in foul trouble and make them keep going to the bench. I mean, that was BG's keys, but that's going to be the, the key here in the second half too. Not much changes. Washington State out rebounding Drake 19 to 16 and where there's a will there is a way and that's kind of what we're doing here as well as Washington State's men's basketball team in Omaha they willed their way to this tournament and we are willing our way through this broadcast it, it is not perfect we know this but we are trying our best and I appreciate everyone that's watching at this point this game has been absolutely electric. The crowd has kind of gotten out of it a little bit because I think some of these Iowa State fans are getting a little bit sleepy going home. But the Drake and Washington State fans are here for the long run, and it should be an absolutely fantastic second half. Four-point lead for Washington State. Again, this is the first time in 16 years that they've been to the tournament. A 7-10 matchup should be absolutely thrilling down the stretch when it's just an honor to be here yeah well let's look at some stats here darnell brody's one for five that's drastic he's one of their leading scorers and right one for two and then has no threes dude uh, their head coach was saying that they wanted 20 threes by the end of this game they're nowhere close right now DeVries will be the trigger man to start the second half for the Drake Bulldogs. Bounce pass to Enright, and we are back underway from Omaha. Quick action early with a dribble. Back cut. Overton bounce pass inside to Brody. Going up against Jones. Puts it up. Leaves it long. Overton gets a rebound. Swatted away by Jones. Rice on the near wing. Leaves it for Wells. Isaiah Watts starting the second half with no big man in there other than Jones, who is six foot nine against the six foot 10 Darnell Brody. Rice at the top of the key, 14 to shoot. Right hand penetration to the baseline, puts it up off the glass in the rim, misses it, Brody pulls it down and gets it into their MVP, Tucker and Wright. Sorry, excuse me, Tucker DeVries. Right hand dribble through the baseline, puts it up, doesn't get the go. Brody puts it in, 33-31, 19 to play in the second half. The lead cut in half for the Cougars. Jones over the timeline. Dribble handoff to Wells, and it's going to be a foul on Drake. It's going to be on Overton to second foul. But a first foul, the second half goes on Overton and the Drake Bulldogs. Inbound from Yakimovsky to Rice. Slow pace. I like this, and he's being orchestrating it right on the logo. Rice, that is. Watts entry pass to Jones, Bad. poked away by Brody and into the hands of Aiton Wright. Dribbling the coast to coast right against Watts and scores it inside. 33 all from Omaha. 18.45 to play in the second half. That's huge. You can hear the, the, cr the crowd getting a little bit more into things. 4-0 run to start the half from the Bulldogs. Jones working on Brody. Enright comes over to double team. Watts. Bounce pass into Jones at the far block. Scoop shot with the right, leaves it short. Brody rips down the rebound. 
He tried to draw that foul on there, but he couldn't quite sell it. I think the refs are kind of getting a little bit used to it now. DeVries, entry pass to Brody. Too easy for the big man, two-hand flush. Oh, oh, earthquake, earthquake. Oh, man. Look at that. It shook the backboard. Oh. oh. 35, 33, Drake, 6-0 run to start the second half. Well, that's not good. If you're a Coug fan, that is. Oh, man. No. Well, at least they're going to toss out some socks to the crowd. Uh, I don't know. It's There's not a lot of positive things that just came out of that. Kind of an inverse of the last three or four games for the Cougars. Mm -hmm. Really slow first halves and decent second halves. They did lose to Colorado in the semifinals. But against UCLA and USC and even Washington, it was a pretty slow first half. And second half was really good. Right now, the first half was pretty great. Second half. Can they come back and win this one? They are down by two. It's not a huge comeback at all. It's one shot to tie it. So you cannot get out of your rhythm. And maybe for Washington State, you're thinking right now, uh-oh, things are going wrong. But just stay within yourselves. Is that what you would say if you're Kyle Smith? Yeah, no. Hey, fellas, let's all take a deep breath here. That's the name of the game for this Cougar team in general, both on offense and defense. But you have more control when you have the offensive possession is slowing things down. They're gonna, Drake's gonna wanna play hurry up and just try to get them on their toes and not play our brand of basketball. And so yeah, I think that's what's going on in the huddle right now is deep breaths, tranquility. Uh, what does LeBron James say on the Calm app? You gotta breathe in and breathe out. I don't know. That the mindfulness, You as Davis shakes his head. <laughs> but you, you get what I'm saying though, it, you have to, be sure of yourself, even in this foreign environment. And I think it's there have been some miscommunications here and there, but that uh, you it'll all come. And I think once this first game, if we get past this first game, I think things will start to click a little bit better. But Rice has to shoot a three. He's got to get the three ball to go down. Head coaching matchup in this game, fantastic. Darian DeVries for the Drake Bulldogs, his son Tucker DeVries, one of the best players in the country. From 2018 to present, Darian DeBreeze has an 150 and 54 record. And Kyle Smith for Washington State was the Pac-12 Coach of the Year. And he has a 257 and 192 record, which is not all that fantastic, but he's been here and built this program to where it's at. And I think Washington State owes him a lot of credit for turning this program around. You were talking about giving a lot of credit to Tony Bennett, who brought his Virginia squad in. They didn't make far, but Tony Bennett was the last coach to kind of bring him here, and it was a large part to Dick Bennett, his father. And so that's kind of that similarity now in the tournament. Back underway, 18 minutes left in the second half to decide a winner to play Iowa State on Saturday. Yakimovsky, far wing, starts the offense to the top of the key. Chinyelu picks up the dribble at the free throw line, back to Rice, penetrating inside, leaves it for Chinyelu, bobbling it all the way into the near corner. Bounces off of Wells' face right into the hands of Brody, and here comes the Drake Bulldogs. Again, they need to slow things down. These miscommunications and bobbles is not good. DeVries picked up by Yakimovsky. This has been a pretty good matchup so far. DeVries has nine, looking to get the double digit, spinning inside. Floater from the middle of the key. Doesn't go. Rebound off of Drake. Nope, off Washington State. The referee corrects himself, and the crowd approves. Washington State does not, but that was pretty clearly off of Jones. Yeah, it was cl it was clear that it was off. Of, even Jones knew it was off of Jones. So yeah, uh, you hate to see it, but uh, especially down like this. But good call. Inbound to Overton, and right at the near wing, looking for Brody. Gets it to the MVP to Br Devries inside to Brody, blocked by Jones, but that's going to be a foul. Too much contact on the body. Pretty clear foul, but does a good job to not let Brody get an easy two. He will go to the free throw line well, for two no. shots. Well, remember that earthquake earlier on in the game when he shook the backboard and the, the foundation behind the basket? You did not need that right there. So Isaac Jones making that crucial foul I think was important as he misses the first. So I would rather have that and 
a lackluster momentum shift here than uh, getting that foul and having another earthquake inside Omaha. 66% free throw shooter, Darnell Brody, six points and six rebounds on the night so far. Makes the second one just right around his average, around 50 to 60%. 36-33, Drake in front by three. 17-10 to play. And a foul is called off the ball. Jones hits the deck and a foul called on Overton. Look, if you have your hands up like it's, I don't know, a uh, search, like a strip search, e you're asking for a foul. Yeah. Like, come Pe on, fella. People think it makes you look not guilty, but you know you just did something when you do that. People don't just put their hands over their head like, oh, I didn't do anything if you didn't do anything. Yeah, so. exactly. Before the whistle was yeah. even blown, too. Yep. Kyron Gibson will check in for Overton. Drake with two fouls on in the half, and Washington State with one. Inbound to Clough, back out to Yakimovsky Good on the pass. near I love wing. That. Clough at the near block, working on Brody, trying to get to that left hand. Puts it over to Wells at the top of the key. Step back three on the way. Got it! Jalen Wells puts it in, 36 all. Drip, drip, drain, going to the well, and that makes it a tie ball game. 16-48 to play, Washington State. Back to a tie game. Things have been really tight in Omaha. Pressurized atmosphere for this one, a high intensity game. DeVries to Brody at the far elbow. Dribble handoff, DeVries circling the drain inside to Brody. And he gets fouled, didn't put it on the deck. That's the second time he might have got away with the travel, but he did get fouled, so the ref's giving them the benefit of the doubt. The foul will go on Yakimovsky. What do you, break down that play, what just happened? Well, I. You, you could break it down, but we could also focus on the future here. That was clearly on Jones, and I think it's a good thing that it was called on Yakimovsky. I know that now he's got two, maybe three fouls, but... Oh. Right, right puts in a three off the inbound. Where was the defense from Washington State? 39-36, Drake has the lead. 16-20 to play after 16 minutes. There will be a media timeout, so the Cougars just have to survive for 15 more seconds. Well, and that's good because now Isaac Jones, is he's crucial on defense, so if he didn't get that, if he got that foul, he would have, Kyle Smith would have made him come back in. Yeah, he's our best player at this point. Clough, left-hand floater, doesn't go from the near block. Tapped around, back to Jones. Still loose, picked up by Drake and Gibson, snaking through the Washington State defense. Enright takes it to the basket with the right hand, high off the glass, Brody offensive rebound, and he's fouled again. Darnell Brody drawing fouls on all of the Washington State players. Let's check to see who this is on, because this could be big if it's on Yakimovsky, and it is. Ooh. Yakimovsky picks up two fouls in two possessions. An immediate timeout coming with 15.46 to play. 39 to 36, Drake has the lead. We'll be back after this media timeout. You're listening to Cable 8 YouTube.
39-26, Drake Bulldogs are up with 15-46 left to go in the second half. Darnell Brody at the line, misses the first. It's been an uh, interesting bout as he misses the second. Wells gets the rebound and immediate pressure from Enright and the Drake Bulldogs, full court press even though they're up by three. Rice though, being a well-oiled conductor as he now orchestrates it to Jones, who's on the left wing. That one-to-one -one matchup and then a toss away, but that is gonna be a hand check on the Bulldogs and that is a crucial foul there and it slows down pace just what Kyle Smith would want for the Cougs. Double team coming in really excellent work by Drake knowing that the big guy is going to put it down low, but that time just slapping the arm. you got to be a little more disciplined if you're Drake coming with that double team. Wells with a nice shifty pass to Jones. Back out to the three-point line, getting all the teammates involved. Yakimovsky finds Jones yet again. And that is going to be an off-ball foul, yeah, foul on, on Gibson. Yeah. That, he, that's his second off-ball foul in, what, four possessions? Yeah, that's incredible as Cougs now inbound. A lot of fouls in these last few possessions for both teams. Wells throws it up and gets it to go on down. That's a one point deficit for WSU. Really good job by Wells not giving up on the play. Putting it in, Washington State still only down by one, but this momentum can really shift. DeVries setting up the offensive design. He's trying to drive down, finds Brody low in the paint. He drives up there and he finds the rim, keeping it a three-point deficit. Another full court press from Enright. How much energy is he gonna be able to have on Rice? And will he have to go to the bench as Rice drives down the lane and it does not fall, but Clough gets the rebound and it's a foul. Uh, is that Drake Davis? What it's kind of yeah. uh, the fans seem to think it's on Drake, but it's kind of hard to tell from all the way up here in the uh, level six. Yeah, that was definitely a foul on Drake. It just I, the crowd was booed so that you couldn't even hear who was on. Couldn't see the numbers, so apologies there. But Washington State ball nonetheless. Look at Gibson again. He is just roughing up Jones. I guess that's what you're going to have to do with Wells taking that shot. It gets to go down. That was a crucial two-pointer. Got to keep things really close if you're Washington State within this one to one point lead or deficit. Can't let Drake get hot. They average 80 points a game. They're right about halfway there. And right to DeVries. Vries trying to drive down into the paint. He can't do it. Brody, though, they're muscling on Clough. He puts it up and gets it to drop on in. Really good job by Brody using his size advantage against Clough. Clough's the tall guy, but Brody, 275 pounds of man. Wells passes it out to Rice, who's on the logo right now. And that will be another foul on the Bulldogs. They cornered Wells, so it was very clear. But it's almost feeling like they're playing with the deficit here, Davis. What's the strategy here from the Bulldogs? They're just being too aggressive. They're not trying to foul by any means. No one's trying to foul 13-37 left in the second half. Enright just going way too hard on these double teams. That's, he's going to the bench right now, and Drake has six personal fouls. And right, and Brody. Brody's yeah. now out. As Rice getting the inbound, hands it off to Jones, who does a little float game, and it's another foul on the Bulldogs. Griff the second is definitely not happy. Griff the second, the live mascot for Drake. Yeah, we saw him coming in today. That was a pretty cool experience. Saw him in his little little tote bag, I guess. They're wheeling him into the stadium. But Drake has seven personal fouls. So Washington State is in the one and one and will be in this two fouls after the next three for the last 13 and a half minutes of this game. As Jones makes the first, you're completely right. Ha, look, and you hear this crowd making the large groan for Jones at the line. 
I don't think they've ever had to face this kind of environment. Maybe against Colorado. It was a, it was a pretty lively fan base. 17,000 in yeah. attendance right now for a Thursday night March Madness game. That's incredible, Davis. The only thing comparable is that Arizona away game on the Neon Lights game. Uh, this is crazy. Can you hear this crowd? That's insane as Jones is unaffected making his second, making a one-point deficit, 43-42 inside Omaha, which borders Iowa. Drake, that's their home state. So it's a definitely home crowd env env environment for the Bulldogs. As they set up the play design, trying to drive down in the paint is Garland and he doesn't get it to go down. Miles Rice grabbing it, bringing it back the other way. Euro step to the basket, it does not fall. DeVries tries to get that rebound for the, the Bulldogs, but is unsuccessful. Garland with the killer pass, and that is gonna be a foul on Rice. Definitely a block, yep, that's gonna be a block. And uh, that'll slow pace down and the Des Moines fans showing their pride here in Omaha. Both teams want this win so bad that they're just sort of playing a little bit out of character. DeVries sets him up and draws Yakimovsky off and then makes that shot right there, that crucial two-pointer. And that's another foul by Garland. Oh my, wow. So yeah, Rice will go to the line for a one and one and this is just free points with the time, the, the clock not running for Washington State. Drake has to stop fouling. You can be aggressive without fouling, but you have to stop reaching in and over like pushing your body into people you can be aggressive but you cannot keep fouling period full stop if you're the bulldogs and the fans don't like it but it they're honest calls and for the wsu i mean you've seen that against washington and against ucla and usc they were making a lot of fouls but the refs weren't necessarily calling it. They were letting it play out. That's not necessarily happening right now in the tournament as Mice Rice makes the second. And Rice is going to come on out and take a breather. And I think that's well needed. I think that's very smart. You can yeah. see him kind of hobbling and taking. Oh, look, he's going into the tunnel. He's yeah. gingerly walking news. on that ankle. That is not good to see. You're going to need wow. Rice. Even though he can't shoot the three, you're going to need him just as a leader and a morale booster yeah. moving on in this tournament. Freshman of the year in the Pac-12 exits into the tunnel. That's huge. Keep our eye on that. We'll keep you updated. Winsu on DeVries, who pulls up from the line. It does not go to down, but Wells is there. Good rebound by Wells, skying for it and going to the apex. Oh, and look at this. Winsu is now directing traffic. He's the orchestra conductor of this offense right now. Now Rice is in the tunnel. French Army Knife. French Army Knife indeed pulls up and does not get it to go down. Swiss didn't find it. As the Bulldogs are now setting their way back up, slow and pace down, trying to get a breather here. Rice Gibson. is back out of the tunnel. He's behind the bench now. That's interesting to see. We'll keep our eye on it. Thank you, Davis. As it is Wright who finds the basket. Yeah, what, what, what does that mean to this team if he's not back in this? If he's not back in this, they just have to get through this game. You can't focus on it too much. You just have to get through it and deal with it later. But right now, you just have to play your game and just accept the fact that he's out. Jones makes the pass to Yakimovsky, but he stumbles it in between his fingers, and it is now Drake possession on the other side of the court. DeVries now setting up the offense, looking for the screen. He gets it. Not quite what he wanted, but he drives down in the paint, but he draws the foul, and that'll send him to the line. Oh. Isaac Jones' second foul. But the good news is there's only 11 minutes left, so he probably will be able to stay in the game, especially with Rice out. You have to at least keep Jones in the game. The two of the leading scorers can't be on the bench at the same time for Washington State. Even though we are a deep team, you have to keep one of those guys on the, at the court at all times, in my opinion. And I'm glad that this media timeout has came when it, it did because Washington State is just out of sorts right now. It's still a three-point game, just down by one shot is all it takes yep. to 
bring it to even, so you can't... I'm glad they got the timeout, and Rice looks like he might be checking back in. And okay, well, he is just all over the place. He was stumbling in to the scorer's table. He looks like he will be okay. He tapped his hand on the scorer's table, so he yeah. did check himself in. But, I, uh, yeah. I'm... Uh, it, I'm skeptical about this decision to put him back in the game. I don't know what happened to him. I didn't see what happened, and I don't know if it was maybe a cramp, perhaps. Maybe he just needed to walk it off or something. But the fact that he checked himself back into the game is a good sign, I think, unless it backfires and he hurts himself even worse. Well, Kyle Smith's MO, at least with the Yakimovsky situation, the Yakster has been pretty adamant in saying that his shoulder isn't 100%. He won't say that, but... He, he's clearly fighting it, and Kyle Smith, at least with that situation, has just kind of let him play his own brand of ball. He said in the press conference that looking back, he might have wanted to pull him, but I don't know if he's going to use that same logic with Rice here. But that's going to be really interesting to see. Um, we're going to use this media timeout a little bit to catch our breath and uh, figure some things out on our end. But uh, yeah, Kansas and uh, uh, is that who's that? Who is that? Kansas and who? Sanford. Kansas and Sanford are going on right now. So we're gonna try to get you an in-studio update coming back out of the break. You're not just listening to something great. You're listening to Cable A. Don't forget to subscribe, review, uh, put a comment in there. All that fun jazz. We'll be right back. As the second buzzard sounds, we're going to come back to you with a studio update. Davis, tell us what has happened in March so far. Well, today's first game in Omaha was the first upset of the tournament. Duquesne 71 over BYU, who only scored 67 points. Not a great showing from the Cougars. So Duquesne moves on as the first upset of the season of this March season. Dayton, the Flyers of Ohio came back from a 17-point deficit against Nevada, went on a 22 run, 20 to 2 run and won 63 to 60 over the Wolfpack of the Mountain West. As DeVries misses the first but makes the second. Davis though, what is the most crucial that you think? Is it that Oakland over Kentucky? What what was the most surprising? I think the most surprising thing is definitely Oakland over Kentucky, but also Dayton coming back from down 17. Nevada had it in the bag and just could not finish. Jones goes up to get the ball. He's spinning over, trying to get that rebound. Does find it. Tips it back out. Wells takes a three-point shot. It does not fall. But the, <laughs> the Bulldogs are doing what they're, they do best in getting that defensive rebound, bringing it back on the other side of the court. DeVries now in control. You're totally right, though, Davis. I was surprised about the Oakland pick as DeVries goes down low and gets that bucket to fall. What does that mean going into the tournament? We're going to face Iowa State. What are your thoughts on that? Well, if we win this game, we will. Right now, we're still down by six, and I'm just going to be focused on this one, but Iowa State's going to be a really, really hard team to play, one of the best defenses in the country, but this game is, we have to score on this possession. As Rice is now back in, looking like himself, guarding and orchestrating the ball, and Yakimovsky goes in to take the shot, Though Jones is there on that miss to get the rebound, makes it fall in, and now it's a four-point game. Jones never gives up on any play. You have to box him out, and Drake normally does a pretty good job but kind of fell asleep on that possession. Garland setting it up for the Bulldogs. And Brody is now back in the game trying to muscle his way on Jones, and he gets another foul. Jones has to be careful to not get overly animated. Just accept the foul call. You're not going to change the ref's mind unless you're asking him what you did wrong. 
it's really a never a good idea to chat with the refs at all, especially after you were just looking a little bit angry. But Jones picks up his third foul, and Brody's just going to keep going at him. And it's Brody only has two fouls at this point, and they need to keep. If Washington State wants to do the same thing, go right at Brody and get him in the foul trouble too. Yep. We they did it in the first half, but they've kind of gone away from that. I you you said it best. I mean. It, you got to get him in foul trouble, and you got to keep on going to the bench as Brody makes the first. Let's let's just talk about maybe not immediately in our bracket, but what does it mean just in general to be here? Like, how do you ex- ex- describe this atmosphere being in Omaha, being in Nebraska and Iowa? What? How would you describe it, Davis? Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity is the phrase that comes to mind because how often do you get to come watch your school play in Nebraska? That's yeah. pretty crazy. And to be at March Madness, I mean, it's just the greatest time of the year, my favorite thing ever, so other than Jenna. But, I mean, it's just so fantastic. Shout out to Jenna, his uh, significant other, as the ball floats into, oh, the Drake fan who – had the ball <laughs> that's awesome put it back into play uh that was very that was good sportsmanship there no what i was thinking of we've run into some very interesting people oh, yeah uh, in ubers and in the mall and whatnot <laughs> and uh, after devries gets done with this offensive takeover he was looking for the foul there miles rice was very clean no hand check on that one, it was all ball Good as away. it's still Drake. I, th- I I want us to think about just what what that experience is like. What is Omaha, especially the viewers back home, that you might never make the trip out here unless you're the Cougs make it to the College World Series for, uh, for baseball. Well, I'll definitely get into that more at the next media timeout, but let's just focus on this game right now. As just, DeVries makes, that. misses that and Yakimovsky gets the rebound. Rice... Coming back into his own, driving down into the lane, and he gets that to fall. But that'll be an offensive. No, that'll be yeah, yeah. A offensive. Offensive foul on an illegal screen. Uh, it looked like maybe it was on Watts for just a moving screen potentially. I was about to say I, I saw the block signal, but it, I mean, uh, block and uh, illegal screen are very similar from one another. I was like, the fans wouldn't be reacting to the way they just did. <laughs> yeah as Enright sets it up. And they've been tossing it around the arc, trying to shoot that three ball. It does not fall down for the Bulldogs, bringing it back the other way. Huge possession. Have to cut it to at least four, if not three, on this possession. Still down by six, the Cougars are. Wells drives down in the lane, tries to put it up for the Bold- or for the F- Cougars. It does not fall. Rebound by Winsu. Does That doesn't get to go either. And now Drake is bringing it back. Nice little move by Enright, tossing it out to the left wing. That goes shot, and the the Drake bench erupts from that one. That was very beautiful. Yeah, made Watts stumble in his shoes that time. Nearly an ankle breaker, and this lead has ballooned to eight now. And that will cause Kyle Smith to call a timeout to reset things with seven minutes and 30 seconds left to go. Cougs down 54 to 46 here in Omaha. Not good. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. This last stretch for Washington State has just been ice cold. You just have to continue to play your game. I mean, we saw Dayton come back from 17 in less than five minutes. Eight points in seven and a half is completely fine. The not good part is that they just continue to miss easy shots. Wells got a really good look at it. Chinelu got an offensive rebound, got a good look at it, and it's just a lid on the basket at this point. But the good news is there's still so much time left, and Drake averages 80 points. They're only at 54 right now. So they're kind of out of their groove. If if Washington State just makes some shots is all that has to happen. They just have to make some sort of shot. Well, and let's look at the three-point percentage here. Drake... Wanted to shoot 20 tonight. They've only made four. All right? Yeah. That's that's a win yeah. right there if you're WSU. 
But you have to reciprocate that. Wells is three for four tonight behind the three-point line. Keep feeding him the rock, I feel like, and you're going to see bountiful supply from that decision. Yeah. And I will answer your question about being in Omaha. And so far, the people here have been very friendly. Yep. And we've met some pretty great people. Met an, three different Uber drivers, four really, that have been pretty fantastic. A West African, Etienne, yep. he was awesome. And some of these other guys, we met a guy that works for Fox, NASCAR. David. David yeah, yeah, David. He was pretty awesome. Took us to the wrong spot, but that <laughs> might have been on us. We don't really know exactly what happened, but we went to the wrong hotel. And... Uh, different city in Iowa (laughs) yeah so we had to drive back across the state but it wasn't too far away but he was pretty cool and I think the whole thing about this town is they're grateful that people come a lot of towns really hate when people come to their city but I think Omaha has kind of embraced this event because it doesn't happen all the time so when they and they host their college world series so they're used to people coming for events like this and yeah they want it to come back so they reciprocate good energy when it's coming in and it's just a good celebration of basketball all around and so Pretty so far, a pretty good experience in Omaha. Etienne, Jeffrey, David, Molly, helping us get around. I think this is. I think this is what I was trying to push out of you. It really feels like I'm in Pullman, Washington, right now. Oh, yeah. It's very, other than the rolling hills, it's got a lot more metropolis. Um, but it, it it feels just like back home. Um, just a few less trees, but. That, it's just that atmosphere here, and uh, it's really special. Um, highly recommend for anyone to come here. F- great, grateful for the hosts and Anthony helping us out with this booth selection and whatnot. So it's been re- a really great time here. We're very thankful as Wells now tries to go to the low post and set us up uh, his own little shot scheme, and that does not go down. Brody getting the rebound. This is a lid on the rim. On that right side of the court, it's just really unfortunate for Washington State. Getting good looks, just not going down. As he pulls up, it does not get to go down. Rice being wise and letting that ball go out of bounds. And so now it's going to be WSU possession with uh, seven minutes left to go. Yeah, Aiton Wright took that three-pointer. He has 18 on the night. And Tucker DeVries, one of the best players in the country, only has 14. So Aiton Wright has really stepped up for the Bulldogs. Yeah, well, and then that end right uh, full court pressure, I was a little bit concerned about that for Drake's sake, but it seemed to kind of rattle the Cougs a little bit as Jones drives down in the paint. That doesn't get to fall. That was a unbelievable, un- unlucky, unlucky lad. Just, as it goes, it, it's in the rim, but it just doesn't fall down. Yeah. As they miss that shot, Wells goes to the rebound. Oh, a foul perhaps on Brody here. Yeah, that's over the back. You're gonna you yeah, gotta call that foul every on day. Brody. That's his third. So we'll so Washington State will go to the line for one and one. Yeah. The PA announcer has announced that it was on the Cougars, but he should correct himself in a few seconds here. Hopefully. If he doesn't, that's not great. Hey, you're listening to us. You're not listening to that <laughs> PA announcer. Yeah. There we go. He does correct himself. But, no, let's talk about a few of the stats. I've said my piece is slowing pace down. Getting to go to the line as Wells makes the first. What do you think, though, Davis, that WSU just needs to do here with 6.30 left in this ballgame? Well, what they need to do is burn past Enright. He's a quick player, but right now his basically ghost pressure, he's pressuring us, but he's just backing off and slowing things down so much that we can't get into our offensive set cleanly. If you just go right around him and into the basket, you can get easy layups, and it's probably going to foul you. Wells makes that second. I completely agree with you on that as he makes a cross-the-court pass to his teammate in that far left corner. Now DeVries driving into the paint, trying to get it to fall down. That was an unlucky bounce for the Bulldogs, but thankful for the Cougs as Rice now setting it up on that wing, trying to drive, make a little shifty, try to break an ankle. Yakimovsky takes a three-point shot! Woo! That was crucial. If you're the Cougs, you needed that. That's a shot in the arm. Oh, and that's going to force a timeout from the Bulldogs. Man. That's all it takes is making shots. Yakimovsky shoots a whole lot, and he makes a good majority of them. But right now, cutting it to three is huge. It's a one-shot game. All you need is one shot to tie it. 
and play great defense like they have been doing, get rebounds, and just make shots. I mean, you're getting great looks. Just keep doing what you're doing. Your shots will fall. And if they don't, it's just unlucky, and you just keep going back for more, and you're going to find yourself with the lead at the end of this game. I'm really liking what Washington State is doing and not panicking. It doesn't seem like they're getting out of control at all. They they know what they need to do, and they're just continuing to get good looks. That 30-second timeout tells you everything you need to know. It's kind of speeding up a little bit, and they kind of dampened it. But look, you see Rice now coming in, having that huddle, talking to the team, just player to player. It has nothing to do with coach. It's just focused on the moment right there. And I like to see that from a team who is down by three, kind of making their way up. Let's talk about it. WSU shooting 46.2% behind the three-point line, and that's in large part to Wells and now Yakamoski with that crucial three. Bulldogs now setting it up is Enright, and they're making sure everyone gets their hand on the rock. As Brody tries to drive it, he loses control of it, but Wells is there to snag that and bring it back the other way. For the Cougs, Rice now setting it up with a play design. Jones was getting in on that off ball, or on ball screen as he lays that up, and that's a crucial two point. One point game now. All it takes is a stop and another basket, and you're back in the lead, and Drake might not even know where they are anymore. DeVries looking, passes it. That is off on Rice's foot, but they are going to call it. Yeah, it'll be Drake Ball. It'll be Drake Ball. Okay, they did make the right decision on that one. Oh, look at the ref slaps uh, Rice on on the on the booty, kind of just signifying like, "Hey, I see what you're doing there." Kind of trying to be all crafty, but that did not work. As it, Drake now inbounds it to Brody. No, excuse me. That is Rosario. Aiden Wright. Aiden Wright that goes and drives in there. But foul is called, and that'll bring him to the line. Yeah, I, I, you, Davis shakes his head and just is like, mm, okay. Just well, sat, like that, that, that's the reaction I'm looking from you right now. And I think that's pretty apt. Not a bad decision. I mean, sending yeah. Aiden Wright to the free throw line, he's a great player. I just think sometimes, I mean, obviously you can't avoid every single foul, but that's yeah. kind of what I'm shaking my head at is, just some of these decisions fouling these players tonight have just been plays that shouldn't be fouls, that you're wasting those fouls on plays where it, you really just need to be in better position. Yeah, especially with 4.51 left on the clock as Wright misses the first, gearing up for the second. You got to be a little bit more cautious. I completely understand what you're saying, Davis, as he makes the second. 55-53. Are you just trying to get a lead here, or are you trying to scheme something more? I would take it to the basket, try to get an and one. Okay, you heard it here first, folks, as Rice kind of thinks about driving. He backs his way back on the logo, hands it off to Wells, though, who gets Jones on that low post, driving around the key, and he draws that foul, and but it doesn't go down right so it's not an and one but he does draw that foul that you were looking for well normally jones is the king of and ones but this time he went back for like a dunk he cocked it behind his head with two hands and then realized oh i'm going up against a six foot ten 275 pound monster in the post and then he just got fouled so he didn't make it but i think jones if he realized that he wasn't going to be able to just yam that on him he could have made an and one but nonetheless going to the free throw line and he makes the first jones is a very unselfish person and i think that was part of it i don't think he was scared i think he just wanted to make the extra pass mm -hmm. and sometimes he's so good at drawing the foul he doesn't even do it on purpose yeah. because the other team is just so intimidated that he's gonna make a shot that they're gonna just do it anyways as he makes the second. Four fouls on Brody now is something to really keep your eye on as Ferguson wow. is checked back into the game. Wow, four fouls with four minutes and 30 seconds left to go. The Coog fans, they're loud and proud right now as DeWright finds his way out, gets that shot, and Overton, who we haven't been calling his name a lot tonight, but Overton makes a crucial three. That brings their three-point percentage 
up to 33.3. A lot of threes involved in that last sequence as Jones drives down in the paint, tries to get it to go up, and it's a float off the window. The rock goes down, doesn't break the glass, but does break that scoring drought with 57 to 58. Yeah, I hadn't had a field goal in a long time for Washington State. Those free throws don't count as field goal makes. They do count as points, but for stats-wise at least. But Tucker DeVries on the bench right now have to get some stops if you're Washington State. Pulls up. Rice gathers the pill back in and now brings it back on the other side of the court. Looking up. Oh, boy. And... Is that going to be yeah, on that, Jones? That's a foul on Jones. He went to set a screen and just totally lost control of his body, I think, and just plowed over the Drake defender. I, I don't know exactly what happened. It would be nice to see a replay because I feel like Jones thinks maybe he got pulled down into the defender. Yeah. But most of the time when it's an offensive foul on a screen, it's a pretty aggressive hit, and most of the time the, the refs are right. Well, that would make it his third foul of the night. So that's something to be concerned about moving forward. Yeah, well, it might be his fourth because he had three already, and that offense foul might put him at the four now. Yeah, that's his fourth foul. So we have a four fouls on Jones and four fouls on Brody. Well, this is interesting. <laughs> this is quite a game. 3.23 to play. This next three minutes is going to be – just this atmosphere, the winner, yeah. it's going to erupt in here no matter what. Yeah. Even though there's like about maybe half the amount of Washington State fans in this arena, either way, it's going to be an exciting finish. It's 11.07 Central Time, and these fans are amped. It, you don't even need any kind of coffee. You got basketball in March tournament style and yeah. this is what everybody needs right now we sleep in may ha and we we ha. march into april to the final four and we sleep in may there is no room for missing action you if you're here you're watching it and you're into it especially if your team's here you can sleep in tomorrow there's no games on friday in omaha <laughs> you're here for the you're here for the game you're here to watch this team and hopefully you're here until Saturday to watch and play the Cyclones. Yeah, well, here's the other thing, too. Sleep in May, that sounds like a true college student at WSU because that's when the end of the semester is, and you're just going to have to reprieve after everything. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, about right? About right. I mean, it yeah. depends on your major, I guess, but some of us don't have as near, nearly as much to do, but... I definitely respect the grind from all college students, although <laughs> I, I know what you're insinuating. You're I, saying that comp students don't do anything. No, no, no. I don't say we don't do anything. I'm just saying that there maybe are some other majors like the sciences that are a little more yeah. difficult. No, they're all – they each have their challenges. So, But they, they, we get ragged on a few times just being the comp majors. But yeah. at the end of the day, it is what it is. And well, some of the some of us are in Omaha and some of us are not, and so oh, I, I wouldn't change my major for the world. No, this is the greatest experience. I mean, growing up, March Madness is my favorite time of the year. Yeah, and to be here calling a game is is absolutely incredible, and I wouldn't be anywhere else right now. This is this is pretty awesome. And this is what I wanted to say. Even though this is not a home atmosphere right now. It kind of feels a little bit like it with the, just the surroundings. I mean, it kind of se seems similar to Pullman. Um, and as more and more Drake fans have kind of left the building, they, it's kind of everyone's bedtime almost. <laughs> um, and the Kooks fans, they're amped. I mean, shoot, guys, it's like 8 o'clock. over. No, 10 o'clock. No, nine. it's 9 o'clock. <laughs> I knew it was some, some sort of a clock as uh, – Drake tries to, oh, no foul called on that one. And the Bulldogs are very upset with that. But Rice grabs the rock and brings it back the other way. Trying to drive down on the lane. He can't find an open lane, though. It's like bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. It's almost like he's in Boston down there. As he tries to get it to go up, it's all ball. But it's still going to be possession WSU. So Darnell Brody's back into the game. Chinyelu is in, and he's going to get subbed out for Isaac Jones. This is interesting. I feel like the ball's going to go into Jones, and one of these guys is probably going to foul out on this, either this possession or one of the next few. 
because it's either going to be an offensive foul for trying to get the, like get him in the foul trouble. One of these two players is probably going to foul out, and I think the winner of this game is whoever fouls out next. Oh, boy. Why do you got to do that with two minutes and 30 <laughs> seconds left? Uh, One-point possession game. You're right. It's an inbound to Jones. He tries to pull it up. Doesn't get it to go down. He gets the rebound, though. Again. There oh. it is. Is Brody Fowler's That's Jones? That's foul on Brody, I believe. Oh, foul on Brody. Boy. He's gone. That's his fifth foul on Darnell Brody. He has met the quota for the night. Darnell Brody with only 13 points. Ferguson is going to have to come in and finish this one out, and it's only a one-point game. This oh. could really be the opening that Washington State, they held the elevator door open with their heel, and now they're just going to step in, hopefully. Oh, Step in and take it all the I way to Saturday. I really hope uh, broadcaster's jinx does not happen tonight. <laughs> you better be knocking on the, the wood table right here as Jones goes to the line, immaculate pink shoes. That's, that's so bright that <laughs> you could just take one of those shoes into a dark tunnel and find your way out. That, that, they're immaculate as he makes the first tying up the ball game. Two minutes and 26 seconds left. Doesn't make the second. DeVries gets that rebound, though, and gives it to Enright, who's now setting up the play design for the Bulldogs. Drives. And that's going to be a foul on, is it Miles Rice that's going to? Oh, Watts. I always get confused between those two pink shoes. It gets a little bit confusing with the highlighter syndrome yeah. up here. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty far up here, which is pretty cool. We do have our own booth, which is just absolutely bougie, which is pretty cool. But uh, sometimes it's hard to see exactly what's going on being this far up. We're basically over the hoops. We can see both sides of the rim. As Wright misses the first. Yeah, this is an interesting viewpoint. We wanted to talk about bands a little bit because you can only send 29 members to each game for your, your college or university, and the bands have sound immaculate both sides, and they have had a mutual agreement with songs, enjoying it. So there might be this tension on the court, but at least off the court, there's been good camaraderie so far as he makes the second, giving the Bulldogs back the lead, and Jones is now setting it up, donates the dime to Watts, who finds Wells. Back to Watts, takes the three-point shot. It goes down! Oh, my! Oh! That's a crucial three-point shot with under two minutes left to go. And timeout is definitely called by Drake as he... He, being Watts, is getting a lot of love from the WSU bench. 61-59. It doesn't matter if Brody's in the game or not if you're going to knock down threes like that. Watts, we saw him go up against USC. He's been hot or cold this season. And Washington State has shot a really great clip from three tonight. They kind of went away from it. I love the shot. If it goes down, it's a great shot, but if it doesn't, it's probably a bad shot. But right now, I love this shot because it went in, and now we have a two-point lead. Maintain is the key word that Kyle Smith should be saying in this huddle is maintain the lead, play great defense. Yeah. Don't foul. <laughs> Do not foul, especially of any jump shooter of any kind, especially a three-pointer, but do not foul you can't let drake get points with the clock stopped rice has three jones has four yakimovsky still has two if you remember that from earlier in the game uh, you can if you do have to foul let it be wells and let it be clough who's now back into this action um wow that three right there sets the total for tonight's game 50 percent for WSU, that's un, that's unseen. That's that's February numbers for this team, as the Cougs are playing a little bit, giving Drake some room on offense, playing it spatially defense. They do not want to draw that foul. Three takes the shot. It does not fall down. That is a large groan from the crowd. And now Rice is slowing things down. You gotta hold on to that ball, hold on to that rock as long as possible. Yeah, start your action around 10 seconds and take it to the basket, but don't 
pass it into any traffic areas. Rice. Letting it go down, eight seconds left on the shot clock. He tries to find it. He drives kind of on that low post. It hits the rim, resets everything. Doesn't matter though, DeVries gets the rebound with 40 seconds left on the clock. Setting it up, looking for Enright. He drives, getting a lane. It's Wells who gets the tip. Is that forced out of bounds, is forced out of bounds. Jalen Wells did a really good job getting out of position and coming back over and it went off the arm of Overton. Oh no! Oh no if you're Drake! They're gonna review it so, but right now I believe that ball went off of Overton. Wells was out of position and it hit, deflected off his arm into the corner. Hopefully they gave us a replay. I don't know why the deal is. We've yet to see a replay in this game from our game. We've seen all kinds of different games around the country, but I guess they're not going to show it to us. They have a play under review up here. So. Well, here's the thing. Whether it's out on whoever, there's 30 seconds on the shot clock. The play clock, though, is at 33.5. So you have that three-second difference as we are going to get to see a little bit of that replay here. Davis, you're the expert on eagle eye i know you got 2020 vision you tell me what do you think that was well i, I believe it's still going to be washington state ball because it was dry it, unless they called a foul that was clearly off of overton and yeah i do believe it will be washington state ball wow it's not over folks it's still there is still that difference in the game clock so if wsu needs to Get that ball out of there yeah, and gotta, not have that five-second violation. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Holy smokes. Okay, so that was huge. Enright. En yeah. Yeah, Enright tries to defend. Was it Watts? Yeah, so Watts came to the basketball, and Enright intercepted it. But before he intercepted it, he discarded Watts by throwing him to the ground. And so it was a foul before the ball even got inbounded, which most times is results in an intentional foul because there is no ball. They're not going for the ball because the ball's not even in play yet. So they're probably they're probably just going to call it a regular foul because he there the ball was pretty close. Yeah. But normally when you get a foul before the inbound happens, it's a personal foul or an intentional foul, which would result uh, it was like basically a flagrant one. But Watts did a really good job of coming to the ball, but Enright. I think he could have intercepted that without throwing him down. You know what's funny is we were looking, I was at least looking at it off ball. He, they were on that left, excuse me, the right wing, and he was coming over, and Rice saw it, and so he threw it in his general direction. He knew he was going to miss it as Watts makes the first crucial make there, making it a three-point lead. If he makes the second, it would be a two-possession game, and that is going to be a dagger almost yeah. with 34.8 seconds left on the clock. And that was another thing with that replay is they were checking the time. That was a made. Oh, my. That is a two-possession lead. Watch just do. That was crucial. As he missed, DeFries doesn't main contain it, as, and that's going to be an, uh, a foul on Drake, on Yakimovsky. 24.7 seconds left. The Drake Se fans have decided to leave the building. I think they've seen enough, which... Oh, my. I don't... This game is not over. This game's so much time. 24.7 on the clock. It's 63 to 59. Yakimovsky to the free throw line. I don't know how you leave right now. How do you do that? I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Well, Yakimovsky misses the but, first. These people are just... Just turn around, watch the game. You paid all this money to come here. Watch well, the game. Well, that's the thing with March Madness. Anything can happen. Yeah. It's not over till it's triple zeros, Davis, as Yakimovsky squares up for that second and makes it. That was crucial right there. Got to stop DeVries. If you're Yakimovsky, who's on DeVries, just don't. Oh, he's got the ball. As DeVries, or no, it's Enright who drives in the lane, gets that shot to go down. Ten seconds left. They're right on Wells pressuring it. Yakimovsky gets it. He's trying to throw it. That's a foul. I think it's going to be on Enright that's going to be attributed with that. With 14.3 seconds left on the clock, it's a one-possession game right now, and you need to make at least one of your free throws if you're the Cougs. Enright has fouled out of this game, so it will be – they'll have to put a guy in for him and – 
that's two players that have fouled out now for Drake, which has really been their Achilles heel is their depth in this game, and as well as Tucker DeVries only having 14 points. Well, let's talk about it. They have 20 fouls. 20 fouls as a team yeah. tonight. That's insane. They have not been known of this pressure as Yakimovsky makes the first. That is a crucial point. That brings it back into a two-possession lead. They, Both these teams are not known for being physical. And so seeing this many fouls is eye-opening. And maybe a good sign for the Cougs as they have 13. And Yakimovsky makes the second. 66-61 inside CHI Health Center. Makes the extra pass. Drake makes the three-point shot. It goes up. It does not go down. Yakimovsky gets the rebound. Dribbles it out. And that's it. That's it, Davis. Oh, my. The Cougs just won a tournament game. 61-66. WSU comes out with the victory. Yeah, listen to these Coug fans. There's not a lot, but where there is, they are going to have a good time in Omaha tonight. Wow. We just witnessed that, Davis. What are your words? What are your first things that come out? He's speechless. Well, I, I can't even say anything. This is one of the coolest things I've ever been to and one of the best games I've seen this team play. I know it's yeah. not a lot of points on the board, but the resiliency of this squad to go out and stick to, I imagine the game plan was get Brody in foul trouble and like just get him out of the game in Washington State. There is no better feeling than a March win. As you hear the fans getting even more rowdy, it is all crimson inside Omaha. Oh, Davis. Ah. This, this is truly amazing. And they're going to live to fight another day. But guess what? That means, who are we facing, Davis? The Iowa State Cyclones. Exactly. Probably the scariest team that this Washington State Cougars could play. I think uh, it's going to be a tough game. I do think we can win it, but it's going to be really, really hard. That defense is just so good. And our offense, I don't know if it can hold up. This Drake team held us to only 66, and they give up pretty around 70, 78 points a game. It's and it's going to be tough to beat Iowa State, but I think we can do it. Do you hear that Go Cougs chant? Oh, yeah, that's Omaha, baby. We're loud and proud in here right now, and this is awesome as Butch is celebrating. No, this is what I wanted to t talk to you about. We talked about this earlier in the game. Drake kind of looked a lot like Washington in Keon Brooks versus DeFreeze. They, they're they almost identical from one another in talent and, and superlatives, right? Except I think Darnell Brody is a better forward slash center big man than what Washington has in Maya. So match matching up wise we were not supposed to win this game this was a bad bad draw drake is a 10 seed but look let's be completely honest they shouldn't have been a 10 seed they should have been a seven or a six just like us and so it's comp yeah we're gonna go up against iowa state that doesn't fit our roles thank you anthony that doesn't fit our scheme well but you can see it right here. This Drake team did not fit our scheme well, yet they persevered, they persevered and 13 fouls is not great, but for a team that doesn't foul a lot, I think this is a good sign that they're being more physical, they're showing up a little bit more, and they're having a bigger presence and kind of playing to their size a little bit. Stepping up to the plate and not being afraid to swing is a huge thing. And Washington State kind of didn't want to swing against Colorado in the Pac-12 semifinals, and I think they took that and realized that their season could be over with their next loss. So you come out here and you get a win, extend your season for at least another game. Win or lose, it's just great to get a win in the tournament. 
How about that? 66 to 61. What a game. Davis, we will enjoy this moment tonight, and I think all of Cougar Nation is going to. But I, I would be remiss not doing my job if I didn't at least ask you the question of how do we compete against Iowa State? Because it's easy to get caught up in these moments of you know winning a, winning a tournament game. But look, your next game is Saturday. You get a day of rest to celebrate, but you got also got to focus on, I would say, arguably one of the best teams in the nation. I, I, I know that's a hot take, but they beat a Houston and just clobbered them. I know they had some injuries on the Cougars, the other Cougars of Texas, but like, I, I would, I, what, what do you need to be working on during tomorrow if you're WSU? Just playing your game and sticking to what got you here it's either going to work or it's not, and you can try to force so many things and become a different team, but at the end of the day, you are what you are, and just go out and play your game, and it's probably going to be a pretty defensive battle. It's going to be tough, that's yeah. for sure, and everyone knows that, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. Anything can happen in March, and Iowa State has lost some games this season to, like, even they lost, they almost lost to BYU at home. They did end up winning that game, but if Washington State can shoot the three that would be huge the Iowa State defense is really good but jump shots are really hard to defend so I think there's no strategy that is just going to be a guaranteed win if you follow it yeah but there is something that you can do and just go out and play your game be athletes and see what happens let me ask you this then if Isaac Jones needs to draw the foul on a specific person on that Iowa State team who's he trying to do it to Oof. Honestly, you can't really take the same approach, but you can try to draw fouls on Robert Jones, who's a pretty good big man. He's a little bit, sometimes he's uncoordinated, so he definitely can get into foul trouble, but they have a pretty deep team. They have a guy that can come in, King, that is a pretty good player as well, that's pretty big. So it's going to be tough. Even if you get that guy out of the game, it's not necessarily going to make the biggest difference. And by the time you do, like in this game, we got Brody out with like two and a half minutes. That was enough time to come back and get the win. But against Iowa State, if you wait till two and a half minutes, you might be down by 10 and it might be too late. So honestly, I would just go in and attack, attack everybody and see what happens. And if they are fouling you early, just keep going at it. And if they're not, just realize that they're not and kind of change your game plan and you can use the timeouts to kind of adjust things and you just got to chunk it out by four minute sections and see what happens that's a very sobering thought davis i'm gonna let you uh, like say anything else you want to say before i close things out here and thank the folks on the stream enjoy the win okay because it doesn't come very often yep 16 years since the last appearance, so that means 16 years since the last win. This team will be etched in history forever in Washington State basketball. Enjoy the win. That's all. I mean, just enjoy it and embrace how awesome this is. Ditto. I want to second that. Yeah, we said it earlier in the broadcast. This team was supposed to finish 10th in the Pac-12. Now here, they're moving on, and they're one of 32 teams in the nation living up to that AP poll ranking. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We appreciate your attendance here, and uh, we're going to be back on Saturday. We'll call that Iowa State game for you back on Cable 8. And uh, what, a, what a time it is to be here at WSU Athletics. The highs, the lows, we're here for you at, for it all. You're listening to K you're not listening to just something that's great. You're listening to Cable 8, closing out here at CHS, CHI Health Center in Omaha. 61-66 Cougs get the victory here in the great state of Nebraska. Until next time, I'm Emmett Brisgornia alongside Davis Hagen, and uh, we'll see you Saturday, Cougs. Enjoy it, though.